Yeah, I um, I got this unit, and I really like how it ended up. This is, uh, I think, going to be the final change design on this, unless there's some uh, problems with it. But it's a lot different than uh, what I had before. It's like a major overhaul. So what I was going to do is I was going to tear it apart and show you the components. But, you know, I got the electronics for it. You know, I got, uh, I got the shield and the power supply and the, the motor controller. And, and I think uh, I'll go ahead and hook the motor up make sure it runs first because I have to I was going to put it in the unit the framework but I have to tear it apart first because this uh, this belt that rides in this channel here has to be installed underneath here and I tried to uh, tried to install it but I can't I can't weave it through the pulleys so I'm gonna have to take it apart to put the belt on and then put it back together and then uh, I want to install it in the framework but I think I'll go ahead and and uh, hook the uh, top motor up make sure make sure it rotates correctly and uh, then once it's in the framework, then I can rotate it there also. But uh, I got that other pulley installed down there. That's for the up and down. It came out pretty good. I mean, I can make a cover for it or... The next design, it'll have a little, you know, I had to cut away a lot of that material to get it to fit. But, um, you know, now that it, that it fits, I don't think I had to, you know, I don't have to cut that material away anymore is basically what I'm trying to say is that I can do it from the inside. But, you know, I had to, had to cut that. So I could get it to fit because I wasn't quite sure on how to make it fit at first. But now I I got it figured out. So, But anyway, I can give you a little heads up on what's going on here. So what I have here, let me uh, get you a little closer. Okay, we got the motor motor shaft here, and these uh, bolts are the adjustment for the motor. And then I got these wheels on the outside. Now before I had this. Uh, the circular piece on there and the circular piece held the belt against the gear but what was happening was there was a lot of resistance because when the belt was tightening to make it rotate it was it was pulling on that circular piece and it was creating a lot of tension and that was uh, it was frustrating and I knew I had to do something different. I mean, it worked, but it it just it didn't work as as good as I wanted it to work. You know, it it worked, but eventually it would have failed. It would have overheated the motor, and uh, so I had to come up with something different. So rather than 
redesign the wheel I just had to find something and then adapt it to fit this so I found uh, I found this uh, 3d printed uh, robot arm wrist timing belt joint assembly with this uh, I don't know how you say his name or maybe that's the machine something machine January 24 2022 so if you go to that you can see what I kind of pattern this off of. So these are rollers here. Now these rollers replace that circular piece I had in there. So when the belt comes around, it's actually riding on a roller. So there's no resistance. And I'm using these bearings. These are the bearings I bought. They're like 3 8 ID and 7 8 OD and 3 8 wide. And that's the bearings inside of here. These bearings, there's four of them. This piece here is stationary. Then there's a slot in here so I can slot these. See, with these ones I had up front, there's no slot in them. And you have to make them a certain diameter to make them fit. As to where these, I didn't want to have to do that again. Because these, these are different diameters because the screw locations are not exactly symmetrical around the, the center of this part. So I had to make these different diameters to fit there's no adjustment on them it's just a straight screw right into this piece but these I slotted so I can adjust them which works a lot better and they ride against that belt there's a piece in the back that rides against the belt also this piece back here and I think I have another one of those here somewhere I don't see it I'll just have to show it to you when I take it apart But, um, yeah, these, uh, these little pieces here, these are guides for this belt. They fit on top of this pulley. And because what's happening is when this rotates, this belt wants to ride up. And then it starts to bind in the corner here and that's what this blue thing is this this plastic this piece of plastic it goes around it's press fit on the inside of this this ring and it keeps the belt from riding up so now it doesn't ride up I don't, it's, uh, yeah, I know, it's, uh, it's cramped in there, and it's hard to explain what this stuff does unless I take it apart, but I think I'll go ahead and hook the, uh, the motor up first and try it out, then I'll take it apart, because I gotta hook the motor up, whether it's in the unit or out of the unit, to try it out, but I just wanted to, to show you what I had here so I can rotate it here
Now, of course, the motor shaft is how it actually rotates. It's doing really good. Now this is uh this is ten, this is thirty. So that's a three to one right there. And then you got the the gear on the outside. So I figured it out and it, it comes out to uh, 18 to 1 reduction. So what I got going on on the sides here. Now these are the plates I use to hold this piece down. Well, I had it clamped. Well, I had it in here, and they're they're going to get removed, and they're being replaced by these pieces. So what this piece is, it's a there's a bearing inside of here. I don't know if you can see it. You can maybe see that one. See, there's a bearing inside of there. And this is just a mount that mounts on the front of this aluminum piece. There's four of these. Now this piece on the side, this aluminum piece, is what holds this, the axle part. But I had these, uh, these covers on here. It's just a, a notch in there and it fits into this groove and then it just bolts on to here and it it holds this top ring down but now that I have these I don't need these anymore I just haven't taken them off yet but um, I just wanted to show that to you Now another thing I was working on was the uh, the 3D printer. Now before, these are the parts I had for it. Now I had to make this extension because if the uh, the piece they use this piece here. Well, this is the one I cut off, remember, so I could get that. But anyway, this this is the piece that holds the the tubing in place. And what was, you know, it, it, it I had a problem before where the fingers were clamping on the tubing and it was squeezing it and as it get hotter, as it got hotter, it would just squeeze it more and then it would 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 wouldn't allow the 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 plastic to flow through the tubing because it was crimping it down so for a long time I couldn't figure out how I was going to do that I know what I wanted I wanted some kind of clamping device like this but I couldn't figure out how to attach it to this piece well actually one of these and uh, for a long time, I kind of had that in the back of my mind on how I was going to do that. I know what I wanted, but I just didn't know how to achieve it. So I kept thinking about it, and then it just came to me a couple days ago. Is Because what I wanted to do, I mean, ideally, if I had a, a male thread on here, it would have to be NPT. One eighth, 
MPT thread, that would work. But I had no way of generating that thread unless I used a die, and they don't really work that well. I, I could have got the guy on the uh, NC Lade to to make it for me, but you know he's kind of busy, and I mean it wasn't that big a deal, you know. So, like I said, I just thought about it, and I said, well, I could I could get a a little one eighth nipple. And just screw it on the here and then screw it into the other part and that would solve the problem. So I said, ah, that's a great idea, you know. So that's what I did. I went ahead and made up these two pieces. I I put the 1 8 NPT in there and I just got to go to the hardware store, get a, a little short nipple for it and I'll be good to go. Get my uh, 3D printer back going again. Had to, I stopped it because... Uh, you know, I was trying to the 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 the, uh, the tubing was was moving because it wasn't crimping it. It was trying to crimp it, but it was already worn. And you know, this has happened like two times already. And I just said, "Well, I I got to fix it," you know. So so I made up these two blocks. And I, you know, I got this, uh, this, uh, blue stuff, which is supposed to be the, uh, the better tubing. So that's what I made this block for. And that fits in there. You tighten those two screws, clamps it down tight. I think I got about five or six thousandths, uh, squish factor on that. You can put it through as much as you want. You know, one side's got to go all the way down to the uh, the brass nozzle. The other side, it doesn't have to go that far. That's the side that feeds. But, uh, hey, I think that's going to work out just great. So I'll go ahead and uh, hook up the electronics on this guy. See if we can't get this thing go around and around. All right, talk to you later.